everyone. I'm Becky Goldsmith with Piece of Cake, and it is Wednesday at two o'clock where I live in Texas, Central Time. I hope it's a nice time of day wherever you are. Um, let me think. Let's see. We're here. Thank you for joining me. Did I say that? I don't think I did. Thank you for joining me today. And if I seem a little discombobulated, it's because it two o'clock snuck up on me again. So, you know what's exciting this week? These are secret projects behind me. I can finally take the green screen down and show you what's coming. So, these are both in a class that I'm teaching together with MJ Kinman. It will be going live, when I say live, it will be going up on Creative Spark in early October. So MJ's part of the class is the gem. It's so cool. I love to, I love making these gems. My part of the class is the machine applique. So you'll see these more because they're up on my design wall and they're going to be behind me next week and maybe the week after and maybe the week after that too. So you'll be seeing them again. All right. Today, today, let me tell you what we're doing. Remember, this is a this is week number two of a multi-week project to make a pillow. My pillow, the one I've started already, features Jim. Y'all know Jim the cat. I hope your pillow is going to feature um, your very own pet. Uh, oh, somebody asked, what programs would we need to get to modify a photo in Windows? I have no idea. <laughs> I haven't, I, I've only used Macs ever in my life. I've never understood PCs, but Adobe products are compatible with all platforms. So my guess is exactly the same, um, the same programs that I told you about last week would be applicable to a Windows computer. Now, Procreate, excuse me, Procreate, it requires the little electronic pencil. And that is, um, I don't know, if, you know, if your computer doesn't do that, then you couldn't do that. So to use Procreate, you're going to have to have a tablet. The other thing you could do would be to just Google it. Google what tracing or drawing programs are available for a PC um, and, and go from there because Google knows a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wish it didn't know so much sometimes. Anyway, so I left you last week with your drawing done or in the works and the tracing on top of the fabric. This week, we're talking, well, this half of the week, I'm talking to you about applique. So here we go. All my lines are on the right side of the fabric. The paper pattern is still pressed in place on the back. I'm going to applique the outer edges of the cat to the pillow using needle turn applique because I, I'm going to use this pillow and I think a turned edge is going to look nice and wear better. I want to trim away the excess fabric, leaving a 3 16 inch seam allowance that's bigger than an eighth of an inch and smaller than a quarter of an inch. There's two ways to do this. I could either cut this out with the paper attached to the fabric. If I was going to do that, I would use my five and a half inch Kai embroidery scissors. I use these for paper they would be really good for this task. In which case, I would cut through both the paper and the fabric at the same time. So I could do it that way. The other thing that I could do is tr pull the fabric off of the pattern and then trim away the excess fabric. And I think that is what I'm going to do for two reasons. My pattern is pretty well adhered to the fabric and this fabric 
is a little bit loosey-goosey. And I'm afraid it might stretch just a little bit as I disengage it from the pattern. And I would just as soon get that looked at before I trim it out. So I want to make sure that's nice and flat. And it is. And now I'm going to trim this with my 6-inch Professional Scissors by Kai. Could I use a different scissor? Oh yeah, I could. But I really like these professional scissors. I like the way they feel in my hand. They do such a beautiful job. They're my favorite scissors. Could I use the other scissors for this? Yes. And they cut beautifully as well. So, use your favorite best scissors and cut out Jim the cat or Andy the dog or cut out your very own treasured animal that is going on your pillow. Okay, at the beginning of the video I said there were two reasons and I only gave you one. The second reason is because I am more used to cutting my applique shapes out not stuck to paper. So in my hand it felt more comfortable to cut them that way. Okay, the next thing is finger pressing. I always finger press and I'm going to talk you through this very important hand applique step. Now that Jim is cut out, I want to finger press all these outer edges before I uh, pin and possibly baste him to the pillow front. And <laughs> I do this on every applique piece, whether it is little bitty tiny or big like this. I hold the fabric, the applique fabric, up in my hands and very carefully go all around the edge, turning under, and then pinching, and it's not like you have to do a death grip pinch, just a nice pinch all the way around. And you know something? This is a technique, the finger pressing, that I have been teaching for 25 or more years. It is in every applique book I've ever written and it is in every online class and the videos. It's in every single one. Finger pressing works. It just does. Now, can you turn the edge under without finger pressing? Sure, sure you can. But it's, in the long run, slower and less accurate than if you just take the time to turn that edge under and give it a little finger press. Because when you're actually sewing and turning the edge under, the fabric will remember where you put this crease. Turn the drawn line to the underside of the applique. Because if you turn it so that you can still see the line on top, you'll see the line on top when you turn the edge under. All right, I'm, I'm going to continue finger pressing. When I'm all done, I'll come back. Well, I'm, I'm back now, but I'll come back to the sewing part. Um, one of the things I realized as I watched the videos, all of these that you'll see today, is that my drawn line looks pretty faint. It's better in person than it is on camera. There's something about that line in the orange... Um, fabric that just makes it look a little less there. That said, with handling, if I need to re-emphasize those lines, I certainly will. Uh, let's see. Okay, next. I did end up basting um, the shape to the block because it's so big, but I also used a glue that I almost never do. Here, I'll show you. I cut my background fabric 15 by 22 
and a half. And I cut it that size for two reasons. This fits the pillow I already own. And I was able to get two rectangles out of this fabric from the fabric that I had. I don't want Jim to be too close to the bottom because when he's on the pillow, you know, the bottom of the pillow will round out. So I want him high enough for that. But other than that, I'm kind of going to eyeball this. So I'm using a ruler just to keep his underside level. And my plan is to embroider some lines across in a contrasting fabric to give him some weight at the bottom. And then I want to line him up. And I'm going to look at it. Do I want him? I think I want him a little lower than that. So I'm going to come down to three and a half inches. This looks about right. Now, this is a big piece of fabric. If I pin him in place, the pins are going to poke my hands and be in the way. I don't want to do that. I want to baste him in place, but I also don't want him to shift while I'm basting. I do not use fabric glue for this kind of thing very often, but I recently got some Roxanne glue based it dip and dab. I'm not going to use very much, just enough to hold the shape in place while I baste. And I'm not going to put the glue on the applique fabric. I'm going to put it on the background fabric. And I did a little test with scrap fabric, and that works really well. It's, it hasn't even dried the full 30 minutes, and that is holding, just in those little dabs, holding it in place. It has not bled through to the top of the applique, and it does feel flexible. This is supposed to wash out. I don't know that I'll be washing the pillow, though, so I do not want to overdo it on the glue. I'm going to unscrew and peel up. Maybe put a little dab there. Put a little dab there. I'm just to go, go under and judiciously add a tiny bit of glue. And then I will let it dry. Okay, I did let it dry. Was I patient and wait 30 minutes? No, I wasn't. Who is that patient to watch glue dry? Not me. Um, okay, somewhere in that video I said I was going to put fabric underneath Jim. I'm not going to put fabric underneath him. I'm going to embroider lines of thread underneath to imply a base. Could you applique something underneath, you know, to make it look like he's sitting on something? Sure, you could. Oh shoot, you could do so many things. You could you could applique flowers, you could do, oh, you can put anything you want underneath your pet. It's it's yours. You can do it. Uh okay. The other thing is that you know, I said the reason my pillow is the size that it is is because I have this pillow to use. Same thing with the fabric. I'm trying to be good <laughs> and not buy too many more things that I really don't need extras of. So, you know, look in your closet. If you've got a pillow form or if you've got a pillow around that you don't really like the looks of anymore, you could use that inside your um, pet pillow. Okay, the basting. Let's talk about basting. I'm basting, and it makes sense to baste with a basting needle. I'm using the ones from Roxanne's. And I'm basting with a 40 weight thread. Go ahead and give that three wraps. I'm using a King Tut that I had in my drawer, but you could use some other thread. I want to baste where I would pin. And so that means placing my basting almost a quarter of an inch away from the edge. That might be a little too close. 
so somewhere between a quarter of an inch and three-eighths of an inch. I'm basting flat because if I pick this up, the applique might shift and I don't want it to do that. If any of your basting stitches wander too close to the edge, what will happen is that it will be too hard to turn the seam allowance under. The basting stitch will be in the way. And if that happens, you'll just need to clip your thread. But by the time you're to that space, clipping your thread really won't affect the basting stitches that remain still holding the fabric to the pillow top. You will need to rotate your block to get all the way around the shape without having to contort your body to get to the other side. I'm going to finish my basting and then I'll be back. Okay, basting is fast. And just so you know, I do not typically baste my applique shapes. Almost never. But this is different because it's so big. In this case, basting is just easier. It, it was efficient. So, you know, it's like so many things in life. It's not always one way. We, we, we've got to be flexible. Okay, the next thing is choosing your applique thread. Here we go. Next, I want to find the thread for my applique, and I've got both my soft and bright bobbin collections here. This is all cotton thread. It's 50 weight two ply from Superior. It's my favorite applique thread. And just looking, I thought that this orange would be the best choice. And it's not bad, but it's a little bright. What's funny is that that tan, that thread disappears better into the applique than the orange does. So it doesn't hurt to give this thread a closer look. I'm going to choose the thread that disappears the most and set my boxes aside. Normally I would thread my needle with the easy threader, and I could, but these are out of stock, or at least they are as I film this. And so I want to show you another couple of options for threading. This is the two-in-one threader from Colonial. Take the wire threader that has the white handle, it's the fine one. Hold the needle really still and push the wire through. And what I'm finding is that it's easier to thread the wire through the needle if you ground your fingers on something so that there's not even little micro movements of your hand holding the needle. Then thread the thread through the opening in the wire, pull it through, pull the needle to the end of the wire, and then hold the wire and pop that through. That'll work. This is a number 11 tulip applique needle. So it's got a little bitty eye. That's one. Then the other threader that I have is made by Roxanne and it's got a little rectangle here and it is the same thing. You thread the wire through and then thread the wire, hold the wire, pull it through, boom. Either way, these, these threaders will work to thread the needle. And you don't need a giant long piece of thread, something like shoulder width apart. Do your knot, grab the thread, one, two, three, four wraps. Hold the wraps, there's your knot. Just like that, so easy, right? <laughs> okay, Lorna let me know this morning that the easy threaders are back in stock, or at least they're on their way to us or will be soon. So if you don't have the easy threader that I've shown you in so many different videos, um, that one's coming and it's really nice. And or the wire threaders work. Okay. 
This next section, this next video is the applique stitch. And what it was four weeks ago when I was doing the leaf, I didn't spend as much time on the mechanics of the applique stitch. And there were several people who actually wanted that. So here we go. This is for you. Uh, now I have to find the thing. Okay. About three weeks ago, when I appliqued the little tiny leaf, I covered inner points and outer points and inner curves and outer curves. So I'm not going to go over that again. I will show you the stitch in somewhat more detail. Always bring your needle up from underneath the edge of the applique. Bring the needle up inside the drawn line so that you bury the knot and the tail of thread under the applique. Use your needle to turn that edge under and then here's the stitch. You put your needle in next to the edge of the applique. Feel the point of the needle on your underneath finger. Rock over that underneath finger. Bend over it. Push the needle up and through the fabric. You want to go as straight down next to the edge of the fabric as you can and on the way up you do not want to be at an angle. You want to bend over, bend the fabric and come straight up through the background and the edge of the applique. If you travel at an angle, you're going to have those toenail stitches and if you pull your thread tight and everything pleats up, it's because instead of going straight down and straight up, you're probably holding your needle like this and you're gliding more flat and parallel to the background fabric and you end up with gaps between the two fabrics. Anywhere you see the shaft of the needle between the two fabrics, well that's going to be, that's going to be bad things. That's where your uh, fabric will pleat up. So I'm going straight down. Notice how I'm holding the needle here going to go straight down, hit my underneath finger, rock over it. Notice where my thumbnail is. My thumbnail straddles the edge of the applique. In fact, that bone is more or less leading straight into the edge of the applique fabric that I'm sewing. I'm going to bend over and up where my thumbnail is. That determines the length of the stitch. And you want to watch your stitch length. If you're doing something like heirloom hand applique, your stitches should be bigger than a sixteenth of an inch in most cases and smaller than an eighth of an inch. For this, for this pillow, do you need to have your stitches be heirloom quality? That is up to you. So you could make slightly longer stitches if you wanted to. But keep an eye on the way the edge of your fabric looks. And don't be afraid to pull your stitches nice and tight. Because if you leave your stitches loose, the edge of your applique will be loose. So notice, I'm sinking those stitches. You can even see a slight indentation there where the, the thread is pulled tight. Now, if you pull your stitches tight and everything pleats up and then you have to loosen your stitch, well, that's where you know you really need to adjust the way you're making your stitch. I have at least two books that walk you through hand applique in great detail. There's The Best Ever Applique Sampler, an excellent book, and there's the newer Hand Sewing Adventure also an excellent book. Plus, the hand applique courses that I teach online on Creative Spark. If you want more detail, because really there's a limit to how much I can do in a timeout session. If you want more detail, uh, there is a lot more detail there. There is also more hand applique instruction on my YouTube channel. If you just go down to the playlist that lists hand applique, there's more there. 
So as I come to places that need clipping, those places would not include outer curves. Never clip an outer curve, never clip an outer point. But I'm going to clip this. This is really more of a curve than a point. So I'm going to give it a shallow kind of clip. And here I'm going to use my toothpick to turn this edge under. Now where I've clipped that, I'm going to wait just a little bit to turn it. But a damp toothpick used right here turns the edge under a little better. And I got a little bit ahead of myself. Usually, I'm only interested in turning under the seam allowance for one, two, maybe three stitches. Beyond that, and it's just not necessary. You'll have to stop and refine the edge anyway. I don't know if you can tell, but sewing against black fabric is hard because the needle disappears into the fabric. So if you too are working against black, or with black applique fabric, make sure you have very good light. On this inner curve, I've gotten to the place where if I turn under any more, it's going to distort the curve. So I'm going to redampen my toothpick, go beyond the curve, and just sweep that under, just like that. I will be adding embroidery to the outside of this edge of the cat. I'm not going to embroider over the applique edge, but I am going to embroider outside of it to help define the edge of the cat and make him cuter. But before I can do that, I've got to applique the whole cat in place, as do you. Okay, a couple of things here. That is really magnified, so it makes it look like my stitches are giant big. They are not. <laughs> they are smaller than an eighth of an inch and bigger than a sixteenth. And a little bit closer to the sixteenth than the eighth. And that's a thing. I don't know if any of you guys um, sew with a magnifier. That is a thing to be aware of. If you are looking at something really magnified, you can end up with stitches that are too small because you're overcompensating for the magnification. Um, I'm about to get a question. Kelly is asking something, but I don't know what yet, but it's coming. Um, let me think, what was the other thing? So it looks like my stitches are bigger. How do, oh, she's asking, how do I not jab my left thumb? Oh, I jab my left thumb. If you could see, there's, there's jabbing marks right there. I just do, I, you know. It's, it's, it's just one of those things. Um, what would be the other thing? Well, and the other thing is that's just if I'm overshooting, jabbing the left thumb. It's when I'm being too exuberant in my stitching. Most of the time I don't jab my thumb. What you do end up doing is getting calluses on your underneath finger. And you can wear an under thimble down there. I don't have much luck wearing a leather thimble on the underneath because you've got to be able to feel the tip of the needle when it goes through. You know, I have a callus, but then I don't have neuropathy on my underneath finger. If you had neuropathy, poking your fingers with needles would probably feel really bad, in which case there's those sticky adhesive um, metal domed thimbles you can put on your underneath finger. There are probably other things you could wear on your underneath finger to help. Uh, what else? There was something I was going to remember. It came and it went. So, next week I'm going to talk about the embroidery. This week was about getting the applique basted on your pillow top and getting it sewn in place. <clears throat> if you have questions, feel free to email me. Otherwise, I will see you next week. And between now and then, you can start thinking about what kind of embroidery you might want to put on your, on your pet. Uh, you might want to start gathering threads. I know I am skewing toward 
number eight pearl cottons and probably number 12 pearl cottons. And I haven't made hard decisions yet, but I will. <laughs> so we are right at 30 minutes. That's perfect. I want to thank you guys. Oh, I should give you my email. There's my email address right down there, becky.pieceofcake at gmail.com. And I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at 2 o'clock my time, which is Central Time, and at whatever o'clock it is where you live. And until then, may you have many happy stitches. Thanks for watching.